Welcome to WCYE. Welcome to WCYE. Welcome to WCYE. Welcome to WCYE, where you put the E in WCYE. What's good, WCYE? You living? You chilling? You having fun where you are? I hope you are. That's because we're going to get ready for another beautiful and epic 
Gotta hype it up with me. Praise and worship. Statement and show it empty, even showing over draft fish. Sometimes I ask why me, then I remember I was sinning. He sent the sun just to cleanse me, now I let his light shine within me. Right now, he got me on new levels, walking on all of these new devils, giving no gas, no brake pedals, praying emotion to flow blessings. My God, uh uh-uh, good, get that understood. My God, uh uh-uh, good, get that understood. And I have a new will, new day, new smile, okay. My life shine. We go nuts, no payday I flip the script on Satan today He won't win, there's no way He won't win, there's no way
giants fall when you stand undefeated. Every battle you Listen, we getting ready for the student takeover, and it's on. about to be on and popping. So, without further ado, let's get it! WCY, 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 All right. world changers, yeah. world changers, yeah. youth experience, youth experience. Now see, we changing the world, man, we changing your views, it's our time to leave, we won't be overlooked just cause we the youth, you ain't heard? We the now generation, tried to turn the lights on us We the power generators, I ain't worried about a hater I ain't gotta rock the latest God on my side, we gon' slide and pull up on Satan Watch me cater this cadence See, don't matter if I'm under or overrated Either way, I'm exceeding expectations Forever patient, never waiting, no
what's up guys i'm back again with series of the week and my next show that i want to talk about is all american now i know this show sometimes people don't really like to watch it but i like it it's my favorite but it can be streamed on netflix and basically the show is just about a young man named spencer james he is a high school football player who gets recruited and it's a lot of things that happen in the show that really amazed me but I don't want to get too deep into it. I want you guys to check it out for yourself. Share with your friends, your family, anybody that you would want to watch shows on. And it is a really good show to, you know, binge watch. So check it out, All American. It is on Netflix. And that is the series of the week. Bye, guys. Enjoy the rest of the service. What's up, WCYE? I'm Melissa, and I'm back with Fun Fact. My fun fact is potato chips cause more weight gain than any other food. Y'all let me know some better alternatives other than potato chips in a um, live chat below. Thanks for watching, enjoy the rest of the service. Hello everybody, it's Mackenzie, and I'm going to be sharing four of my unpopular opinions that I have. Number one, milk is good. Milk is delicious, I like milk. I mean, how do you not like it? I mean, I can understand if you're lactose intolerant, but still, milk is good, it's like, it's like, it tastes like dairy. I don't know how dairy tastes though, but it still tastes like dairy. And it's delicious. And it's, it's refreshing, you know? Like I can't, I personally, I don't like chocolate milk. Not that it doesn't taste good, but because it's too heavy. But vanilla milk and strawberry milk, stra strawberry milk though, I love strawberry milk. Strawberry milk is delicious. It's so good. It tastes like, it tastes like strawberry ice cream. Yeah, strawberry ice cream. If you don't like strawberry ice cream, then what? That, what? How could you not like strawberry ice cream? Number two, Broadway music is just as good as regular music. If you think about it, Broadway music, it tells a story. It has a journey, it has a beginning, a middle, and an end. Regular music does not do that. It has a topic or a subject and it just has things that pertain to that topic or subject. Why would you listen to that when you can listen to a story that's a song and it's beautiful? Because you have like the actual song, like the lyrics and stuff, but then you have like the nice composition and the musicality of the song and it's just put together equals excellence. Yeah. Number three. Chess is not that hard. Chess is actually really easy once you learn how to play. Like Pastor Anthony says, it's not that it's hard, it's that it's unfamiliar. And once you learn how to play chess and you grasp the concept of how to play chess and how to use the pieces and how they help the king from being jumped and taken, it's pretty fun and it's pretty, it's really easy. It's easy, I promise you it is. Now last, but certainly not least, number four, condiments are overrated. I'm, I'm gonna give you a moment to just process what I just said because people are gonna probably be like, what did she say? Did she say condiments are overrated? What is wrong with her? How do you not lick condiments? Your food is probably so dry. Ew, ew, ew. Actually, my food is not dry because I have saliva. Saliva makes your food moist because you put it in your mouth and you have saliva in your mouth and then it gets mushy and you can swallow it. So it's not dry, it's moist because I have saliva. And also condiments are just, what's the point of them? I mean, like, what you're doing is you're getting a fruit or a vegetable. Like, it's like you're getting a, you're getting a tomato, right, for ketchup. You're gonna get the tomato, you're gonna smash up the tomato, and you're gonna put it over french fries. Tell me, why would you do that? That's just being really extra, and that's why they're overrated. Well, those are my four unpopular opinions. Thank you for watching. Hey, what's up guys? I am back with the joke of the day. And the joke of the day is, did you hear about that new restaurant called Karma? Well, if you think you know what the answer is, put it in the comment section below and I will be right back. What's up WCYE? It's your girl, Blessing, just in case you didn't know that. Today, I'm coming to you lovely people with a segment that I would like to call, Guess That Movie. The way this is gonna go is, I'll give you guys some clues. You guys have a few seconds to comment it in the chat and I will reveal the answer at the end. You guys ready? All right, let's roll. Okay, first clue. 
This is a Disney animation of a classic tale, okay? Second clue, the main character was sadly captured as a baby. Yeah. Third clue, her hair has magical powers. I'll give you guys a few seconds to comment it in the chat. Okay, I hope you guys got it. Um, the answer to this movie, or the clues, is Tangled. If you put Rapunzel, that's fine. But the actual movie is called Tangled, and it's kind of, it's one of my favorite Disney movies. Okay. <laughs> Next movie. Okay, so the main, first clue, the main character is a king. Okay. Second clue. Um, this movie came out on January 29th, 2018, one day before my birthday. That's cool to me. Last clue, Wakanda Forever. That should be a big clue. I'm gonna give you guys a few seconds to answer that. That last clue would have gave it all. Okay, let me reveal the answer, and the answer is Black Panther. Hope you guys got that. Last movie clues. Are you guys ready? Okay, first clue. Johnny Depp act, acted in this movie. I know he acted in a lot of movies. Just chill out. I'll give you guys more clues. Johnny Depp acted in this movie, first clue. Second clue, the famous golden ticket. If you know what I'm talking about, put it in the chat. Last but not least of the clues, it has Oompa Loompa workers. I've been saying Oompa Loompa a whole lot. And it's a pretty fun word. I mean, it's a little bus. The answer to this movie, the movie is called Charlie and the Chocolate Factory. I hope you guys got it. I want you guys to comment how many you got. It's only like, there's only like three movies. And um, if you guys want more of these guess the movies, comment that in the chat. Other than that, I'll let you guys go and see the next, the rest of the service. Bye. Good morning, WCYE. It's your girl, Nadia. And today I will be giving you guys a couple of random animal facts. So let's get started. All right, guys. So panda bears are one of my favorite animals. So I will be telling you guys random facts about panda bears. So the first fact is that pandas are actually very shy. They don't venture into areas where people live. This restricts pandas to very limited areas. The next fact is that pandas eat almost nothing except bamboo. Occasionally, they eat other vegetation such as fish and or small animals, but bamboo accounts for 99% of their diets. Pandas eat very fast. They eat a lot and they spend about 12 hours a day eating. An adult female panda weighs 200 pounds. Pandas can also climb as high as 13,000 feet and are also very good swimmers. Sometimes male pandas relax by doing handstands against trees. Pandas' molars are very broad and flat. The shape of the teeth help the animals crush their bamboo shoots, leaves, and stems that they eat. 
they chop on bamboo up to one and a half inches thick. To get bamboo from their mouths to their mouths, they hold the stems with their front paws, which have enlarged wrist bones that act as thumbs for gripping. A panda should have at least two bamboo species where it lives or it will starve. A scarcity in bamboo threatens the already limited panda population. And that's it guys. So I hope you guys learned something from this video. I hope you guys liked this video and I hope you guys enjoyed the rest of today's service. All right guys, I am back with the joke of the day and the joke of the day once again was, did you hear about that new restaurant called Karma? And the answer is, there's no menu. <laughs> you get what you deserve. <laughs> I know some of y'all probably thought that was corny, but that was actually really funny to me. But yeah, that's the joke of the day. So just enjoy the rest of the service. Hold up, hold up, come on, come on, come on. Hold up, hold up, hold up, hold up, hold up. Hey. Can't start it that way. Beautiful, beautiful, beautiful people. How are you doing? We are here on another Wednesday. Yes, you guessed it, for another episode of Garage Sessions. <laughs> We're here. Uh, I don't have a lot to say today. We're going to get right to the music. Um... Yeah, and we're going to get right to the music. So I'm going to go ahead and hit the three claps. Yeah. 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 All right. Okay. Uh. Right? Okay. Uh. Look. I just wanna be a goat like two, three, so it's best that I stay in the zone. I've been learning that success is a team sport. Can't win a chip on your own. Stab patting only good in a moment. Subtracting from your legacy. Stay patient, draft right. We might wound up and win us a ring. G unit full of young bucks that gon' stay down till we come up. If you talking about the top spot, you know it's not valid. It's not us. In God I trust. Government I don't. All the pandemic did was show us what we really know. Trapping out the rides. Hopefully I could sell some shows. This is no more. Rides vision clearer than it was before. If it get blurry, I'ma keep on walking till I feel something. They say faith is when you moving until God reveals something. See, I've been on point since I was running a one. Mm, barely got a shot, but still a son of a gun. In all of my losses, only lessons were learned. Out of options, started opting for everything I deserve. I'm just a legend in the county, man. That's cool, but I want the glow. Haven't mastered my skin regimen, but I got the glow. Money, cash, real J fans sitting know the flow. RIP DMX, a legend gone too soon. Times changing. Time to hop in the time chamber, hyperbolic. This not for clout, this is all training I'm draining the water out of my pipe Dreams to nurture seeds I've been neglecting since I was 18 Big dreams, it was all cool Till adulthood hit When broke in college Walmart the only job that I could get Stay insane in sessions And rapping on pool pits Pissed off at 21 Cause I'm not on yet Man, what a arrogant mind Thank God that I weathered the storm and realigned If you graduated feeling like a failure Cause I, 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 ah, I don't know what else Man, yo, that's it I think I was gonna be like, uh, if you, if you, if you graduated feeling like a failure Cause you don't have it all figured out Understand it, get better with time Ah, garage sessions, yeah, we here for sure.
Thank God. Trauma, deceitful, and beauty is vain. A woman who fit a little she will be praised. Don't profit a man for the whole world to gain. In the process, you losing your soul to the game. My brother will never do me like he came. Thello got the biddies like his canes. They done let the birdie out the cave. Now that birdie turn into a jet. Pure out your step. Enemy looking for something to sweep. This is the wreck. Better elect. Jesus and Nazareth to take the lead. Ready on set. Don't really bet. But when I do, I'm a bet on the king. God got the will even when it's on E. God got the will even when it's a lease. This is good news. This is my groove. This is the tape that Way overdue, this is the truth, this is the roof. Waves in the holy water like a pool. Follow the rules, follow the clues. Follow them when we pay all of our dues. Got on the side, no way we can lose. Something like Jordan and Carolina Blues. Love over hate, real over fake. Praying for everything that's on my plate. Don't got a cape, but I got taste. Hits in my catalog, one of them grace. Head of my place, high escape. Y'all thought he died, we made a mistake. Got on the side, we walking on lakes. So he's on time, he never been late. Never been, never been. God is always answered when I knock. God only protect me when he block God let me up every time I drop God ain't switching up, he is my rock God is always answer when I knock God only protect me when he block God let me up every time I drop God ain't switching up, he is my rock First recording profess, rush is short, it's no stress Less is over, son, I've been coming obsessed I've been pouring my best, where it's coming from? Lord, give my breath Floor gain my strength, floor gain my lord gun finesse, lord gun impress. Always overcome, always breaking through locks, chains falling like blocks, dominoes where credits do get props, coming through can't stop. Vomino, so they'll run it through slots, wholesale, whole lot. All it goes, the well filled to the top, the seal may pop. Overflow now, can you catch that drift? Can you snap that flick? And it can the force all of my wrist, can't force none of this. Challenging myself and my wit, the skill may tip, balancing the L's accomplishments. Cause it all makes sense, champion, champion. God is always answer when I knock God only protect me when he block God let me up every time I drop God ain't switching up, he is my rock God is always answer when I knock God only protect me when he block God let me up every time I drop God ain't switching up, he is my rock Rock, 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 rock. Press record and profess, rush is short, it's no stress. Less is over, son, I've been coming obsessed. I've been pouring my best, where it's coming from? Lord, gain my breath, Lord, gain my strength, Lord, gain my Lord, gun finesse, Lord, gun impress. Always overcome, always overcome. God is always answer when I knock. God only protect me when he block God let me up every time I drop God ain't switching up, he is my rock God is always answer when I knock God only protect me when he block God let me up every time I drop God ain't switching up, he is my rock You don't feel nice? Hey, YouTube. Everybody make some noise for everybody on YouTube. Yes, sir. My name is Pastor Anthony Adams. I'm the senior youth pastor here. For those of you that know and for those of you that don't know, this is WCYE where you put the E in WCYE. That's right. You are the experience. And we're getting ready to crank this thing up. I have my children with me. All of them are here on stage with me from the oldest to the youngest to the second oldest to the youngest boy. Okay. All right? Let's pray, and then we're going to dive into this thing. We got the mics ready for the audience because I'm going to need to hear from the audience. You guys are part of this message. So I need to hear what's on your hearts, what's on your minds, so that we can get to the bottom of this parent-child relationship thing. All right? Y'all ready? Father God, I thank you for these, your precious sheep. I thank you that revelation knowledge flows freely, uninterrupted, and unhindered by any satanic or demonic force. Think through my mind, speak through my vocal cords. None of me 
and all of you. I declare every heart anointed to receive and every ear anointed to hear. In Jesus' name I pray. Holy Spirit, have your perfect will in this service. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. So we've got mics for you guys. You got a mic? You got a mic? They got mics coming to you. Shout out to the production team, man. Jalen's so crazy. Talk about that growing like roaches. I just, I just cracked up when he said that. I wasn't ready. So let's do a quick recap, all right? Uh, Shane, you guys remember when we started talking about uh, honoring your parents. So one of the first points that we put out was the definition of honor, right? So honor is like high respect, great esteem. It's adherence to what is right or to a conventional standard of conduct. Uh, in Psalms 19 and 1, the Hebrew word uh, or another word for uh, honor is glory. So the Hebrew word for glory is kabod, meaning weight, significance. God's eternal significance is seen in the fact that he brought a universe into existence. In the New Testament, the Greek term for glory is doxa, which speaks of honor, dignity, or praise. When used as a verb, honor means to show regard, whereas respect is to have esteem for. When used as a noun, respect denotes an attitude of regard or consideration, whereas honor is used to denote the state of being noble, morally upright, virtuous, etc. cetera. Um, we also share with you that the Bible speaks on how children are a reward to their parents. So your purpose or the position that you play or the role that you play in the life or in the relationship between you and your parents is you are supposed to be a reward from God himself to your parents. So these are my rewards. High reward. High reward. How you doing? High reward. Okay. Hello, Morpheus. Are you okay today? You don't want to be up here? You just chilling? This is new. Anybody that knows Shane, is this new? It's new. You okay? This is a service where we talk about it. Did I do something? This, <laughs> did somebody else do something? So you feeling some type of way right now? You need a minute? You don't have to be up here if you don't want to be. You straight. You going to participate? All right. Remember, we changed the, say it in the mic. Atmosphere. Say it again. Atmosphere. We changed the. Atmosphere. The atmosphere don't change. Me. There you go. You believe that? Execute. So the purpose of a parent is to be a trainer. Our job is to train you, not raise you. Raising you is God's job. He instructs us to train you. So last week, I showed some clips of Answer when he was getting trained by his trainer, Darius Bursford. So in the seventh grade, he started getting trained. He had to go out, he had to do a whole bunch of tireless drills uh, using a basketball that wasn't a normal basketball, but a basketball that weighed about 10 pounds, about 10 pounds. So he was bouncing a, a, a basketball that had a lot of pressure. He was shooting with a basketball that had a lot of pressure. Uh, he was driving to the, into the paint with a basketball that had a lot of pressure. All of this was what? Was it frustrating? What, to yeah. Say what it was. Uh, it was frustrating and tiring. It was frustrating, it was tiring, but you kept doing it. Yes. Why? Because I knew it would make me better. It would make you better. Mm -hmm. So what ended up happening was you ended up in the 10th grade mm -hmm. winning MVP. Yeah, sir. Right? Mm -hmm. That was just in the, what, 10th grade? Mm -hmm. Or was it 11th? 10th grade. 10th grade, you won MVP. Now you're a senior now. Mm -hmm. Do you still remember things from your training? Yes. Does it mean that training stops? No. So you still go to the gym at 5 in the morning? Yes. When they have conditioning and different things like that? Yes. Shane, you're not, you like basketball, right? It's not something you're trying to pursue like that, but you like doing it. Do you submit to the training? Yes. Why? Because I'm, it's wasting my time if I just don't. I, what'd you say? It's wasting my time if I don't do it. Can y'all hear him? Kayla said yes, but she's just being nice because she loves Shay. What'd you say? 
Because it's a waste of my time if I don't do it. It's a waste of your time if you don't do it because why sign up for it if you're not going to train, right, and go through all of the, what are the stuff that you go through? Workouts. Huh? Workouts. Workouts are fun? No. No? What are they? Exhausting. Exhausting? What else? They hurt. They hurt physically? Emotionally? Mm. Just physically? What hurts on your body? Everything. Everything? And you still do it. You must like pain. Mm, no. No? But you do it still because you want to be successful in basketball. Yes. Okay. What about you? What is something that you train for? I remember we were sending you out to Barbizon for what? For modeling, acting, entertainment. And we had to wake up early before church and get you all the way down there to Duluth. Marietta. No, it wasn't Marietta. I don't know. It was far. Yeah. Had to get you all the way down there, and you had to do a whole bunch of walking mm -hmm. over and over and over again. Mm -hmm. You had to relearn things that you thought you already knew mm -hmm. about Very taking painful. pictures, and uh, this is how you smile. And uh, how you sit. And how, how you, you sit. Walk, and how you enter a door. Yeah. How you use the wall for a prop and not lean on it when you're taking pictures, right? Mm -hmm. You went through all of that. Mm -hmm. And it was frustrating because some of the stuff you already knew already, right? What, how did you feel when you were learning stuff that you already knew? I mean, it's kind of annoying because it's kind of like someone saying, like, oh, um, this is how you count to three, and you know how to count to three. Like, that's just, like, common sense. But, like, they tell you it anyway, and then you have to practice it as if you're just now learning it. So. Okay. So, but you had to go through those things. Yeah. You had to go through those things. And last week or earlier this week, did they send you a check? Yeah. They sent you a check. <laughs> so that's what's up. So it's like. The training part yields a benefit. It just doesn't feel like it in the moment of the training. The purpose of your parent is to train you for what's to come. Trail was being trained in basketball because that was something that he wanted to do, that he wants to do, right? So he figured if I want to be better in the future, I have to trust the process right now. Remember when I told you guys, the devil hides where? In the details of what? Of your day. The enemy hides in the details of your day. So he's not going to attack that factor that says, uh, you got to wake up or you got to pray. Did you pray this morning? Did you worship God this morning? Did you do this? Did you do that? No. He's going to try and attack that honor thy mother and thy father and all will be well with you. It's the third commandment with a promise. So because it's a promise from God himself that all will be well with you, the enemy is going to attack that relationship like you've never seen before. So when you find yourselves battling with honoring your mother, honoring your father, honoring your guardian, remember, it's the all will be well with you factor. Now here's the thing. The enemy isn't going to attack anybody that's not a threat, right? Uh, how many of you in here play football? You play football for, the, for your school? Put your hand down, girl. You play football for your school? Okay, what's a sorry team that y'all play? Who? Who? Midtown High School. So when y'all play them, huh? What? We talk is that your school? Okay, I'm sorry. I'm, I didn't say it. It's okay. It's okay. Anyway, so when you guys play Midtown, do you give it everything you got? You do. In my opinion, when you're playing somebody that's like a walkover or a cakewalk, it's like you just, you're not really, it's like you're practicing. It's like a highlight reel. You know what I'm saying? Everybody's going to get an opportunity to shine. The kid that doesn't normally dunk is going to get an opportunity to dunk on this team. The kid that don't normally score, he's going to get an opportunity to score on his team. Why? Because the school sucks. They have no athleticism. They have no organization. And they're 0 and, they're, uh, 30 and 0. Oh, what's the, was it, no, 0 and 30? Yeah, oh, they're 0 and 30. They played 30 games, right? They've lost each and every one of them. 
by at least 50 points, right? So when people play them, no disrespect, Carson, we're not talking about your school, I'm just using it as an example today. When people play Midtown, <laughs> right? It's like it's a highlight reel. Likewise with you guys. If the devil didn't think you guys had the potential or the ability to be extraordinarily great in this world, he'd leave you alone. Some of you may say, well, that's a good thing. But the other part is, if he was to leave you alone, right, mm -hmm. that means you're stuck in average, which is the enemy to what? Greatness. So as long as you're not making any noise, as long as you're living paycheck to paycheck, as long as you, you know, uh, uh, not trying to uh, uh, walk in your gift or walk in, in your anointing and, you know, God has given you a gift to speak. God has given you a gift to uh, sing. God has given you a gift to uh, uh, dance. God has given you a gift to do all of these things. As long as you're not trying to use that gift, you're okay. And I'll leave you alone. But the second you try to be great, the second you try to understand who you are in Christ and who Christ is in you, the second that happens, now we have a problem and now I got to hit them with pressure. I've got to tear this thing up. I've got to try and destroy this kid's life. I've already gotten their mother. I've already gotten their father. I've already gotten their grandparents. I've already reached them. But now I've got to make sure that they don't reach it. They don't reach their full potential. I gotta make sure that their grandkids that they don't even have yet, I gotta start working on that now because the second they understand who they are is the second the enemy's kingdom is doomed for. I was talking to my son earlier, my oldest son, and I was telling him, you know, life, it's always pressure. When you reach a goal, a lot of times kids like to think, oh, I reached my goal, that's it. No. You know what happens after the first goal? What happens? The second goal. And then, and then, and then, it never stops. The Bible says, in this world, you will have trials and tribulations, but be of good cheer, for I have overcome the world. What he's saying is, life is going to be tough. But just because life is tough doesn't mean that it has to move you the way it moves others. When you know who you are in Christ and you know who Christ is in you, yeah, I get pressure every day, but you wouldn't be able to tell it. Does that make sense? You're supposed to grow. You're supposed to master these small training seasons of your life. The seasons that you're in that says, hey, pick that up off the floor. The seasons that you're in that say, why is there dishes in the dirty? The, I mean, why is there dirty dishes in the sink? Uh, the, 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 the small part that says all of the dishes are washed, but then when I go in and grab a cup, there's fingerprints up on the cup and it's cruddy. Or, you know, when I go to use it, or Constance is using the restroom and I gotta go real bad, and then I go into another bathroom and, and, it, and then it, <laughs> and it, uh, what? It, it's bad, it's just bad, you know? Because we're like, clean up after yourselves, pick up after yourselves, do this, do that. Uh, uh, we're doing, it, a lot of the stuff is annoying to you guys because it seems what? What does it seem like, Junior? When we're we telling you to do all of these things. Did you clean your room? Go back. No, can I go to the store? No, you can't go until you do this. You, how, does, how do you feel when it happens? Frustrated. Why? Unease. Unease. Because you just be wanting to what? Chill. Chill. How many of you agree? Some of you just, right by a show of hands, how many of you just want to chill by a show of hands, right? So when your parents come home and they like, you've been home all day and you didn't vacuum, or here's the kicker, and I know this is what you guys really want to say. They come home from work. You just got home 40 minutes before them from school, and they treat their day as if they had more work to do than you had to do. So it's like, I just got home from school. I just got home from work. I just got home from school, right? So you're like, man, I'm trying to do what I got to do, but I had a tough day too. 
I had to deal with this bully. I had to deal with this teacher. And she must have been on one from whatever she got going on at home. So I'm dealing with all this stuff, too. We all have things that we're dealing with. But when I come home and you try to chump my day off like it was nothing, talking about why is the dish in the sink? Because I finally had an opportunity to take a nap. And you know what, Mom? You know what, Dad? I did. I took a nap. And yeah, the dish is in the sink. Ten minutes from then, after you wake up from off the floor, you come back. <laughs> uh, and I was just totally giving you guys a scenario, trying to show you that I'm empathetic to where you guys are. By a show of hands, how many of you have ever had that happen to you? You come home from school, your parents are telling you to do stuff, and they're treating your day like you just didn't go through. How many hours y'all in school? Is it really eight hours? It's like six hours. It rounds up. He talking about it rounds up. He going round to the nearest hour. <laughs> so you guys are in school how long a day, honestly? So seven hours. I'm not talking about after school activities. I'm talking about from homeroom. 8.30 to 3.30. So how many hours is that? Come on, uh, high school students. Seven hours. It's seven hours? Okay, so you guys are in school seven hours a day. And your currency, the money that you make, comes by way, nope, it comes by way of points, credits, and alphabets. Right? Right? So, and I'm, and I'm saying this, I'm, I'm really on your side, and I'm trying to show my kids that I understand and I get it, right? Which is why when they get home, the only thing I'm really asking of them is they walk the dog and, you know, do the regular stuff. But, and if they have homework, I always ask them if they have homework first, right? I ask you, I'm like, y'all got homework? All right, go do that first, right? But I don't want to chump off what you have going on in school. When you guys go to school, you have this. When you start school off, you got the first uh, parent-teacher thing. We went to that, right? But in your first homeroom class, they give you a what? Syllabus. A syllabus. And in that syllabus, what is in that syllabus? Every school year. The Every whole school year. year. But what's the main important thing that a student would need to look at, like a parent looks at when it comes to their job? Great percentages. Hold on, hold on. Let them answer. What? The stuff you're going to need from class. So. Uh, when I was working out there, man, it was like, okay, every time I got my paycheck, I'm looking at it and I'm reading it, right? Like a progress report, right? Because I put in an amount of work each week and I'm compensated for that amount of work. So you're looking for discrepancies because sometimes what you get don't add what you feel like you did, right? Okay, likewise with you guys. When you start that school year off and you have that syllabus, they are letting you know quizzes are worth X amount of points. How many points a quiz is worth? 30 percent. 30 percent for a freaking quiz? Quiz and test. That don't sound right. How much is a quiz worth? Yeah, it's 25. What about the, what about the test? 40 the test of 40 percent? Yeah. Okay. So quizzes are 30 percent. Test of 40 percent. 40 50, 60, 70, that's 70%, 70, 80, 90, 100, so that's 30% left. Homework is 10 percent. Homework is 10 percent. And what else? And then participation, I heard that before. Who? Participation is 15 percent? Okay, so as a parent, as a parent, when you get your check, you're looking at, okay, okay, I've got insurance, so that came out, uh, taxes came out, uh, X, Y, Z came out. What do I have left, right? That's what parents have to deal with. Kids have to deal with, and you have to deal with, okay, if tests are 40%, right? What's the lowest percent? 10? And that's for what? Homework. Homework. You always look at the high, and then you look at the low, right? So if I'm passing all of my tests and my homework is on point, when I get a 65 or a 70 on a quiz, it won't affect me as much because of how the numbers are worked out. Y'all know that, right? Every, raise your hand if you knew that. Okay, so everybody in here has straight A's? Straight A's? 
A's and B's? All C's? Everybody ain't going to raise their hand for that. Be like, man, mind your business, bro. Mind your business. The point that I'm trying to make is everything that I just described is a detail. Listen to me. Everything that I just described is a detail. And when you look at those details, and remember, who hides in the details? The devil hides in the details of your day. Your mother or your father come home. It's payday. They don't feel like it's payday. You understand? They come home. Hey, Dad, you know, you with your normal play stuff, right? And they're like, yeah, what's up? Hey, not right now, bro. Dang, what's wrong with Dad? Why everything got to be wrong with me? Now, all of a sudden, the highlight is on you, right? Because the bathroom ain't clean. You've been at work all day, and all you do is go to school, and you got home 45 minutes before me, and ain't no lines in the carpet. The devil hides in the details of the day, even when it comes to the parent. The parent comes home. The parent is upset. The parent is going in on you, and it ain't even really your fault. Where does the Holy Spirit come into play at? Lord, I pray that you, my father really has a relationship with you. Lord, I pray that my mother truly has a relationship with you because I didn't do nothing, but my mom is acting totally different. I didn't do nothing, but my dad is acting totally different. Lord, right now, I pray for my father. I pray for my mother. Uh, whatever's wrong, Father God, make it right in Jesus' name. And you do your best to play your position, which is a reward. You are a reward to your parents. There's been several times, I wouldn't say several, but there's been a few times where I've been going through things and everybody going to hate it, but it's usually Woogie. It's usually Woogie. No, not the problem. Yeah, she thought it was the problem. No, Woogie isn't the problem. It's usually Woogie that comes up to me. Woogie's shame. It's usually Shane that comes up because he's the empathetic one. He's the one that uh, is more sensitive to, to feelings and different things. Hey, Dad, you're doing a good job raising me. Love you. And then he'll just walk out. And I'll be like, and he'll walk, I'll be like, yeah, appreciate it, appreciate it. Then he'll walk out. <laughs> Thank you, Jesus. <laughs> then he come back in. Oh, yeah, Dad. Yeah, what's up? Oh, yeah, can I go outside, go do such and such? Yeah, yeah, go do whatever you want to do. But the devil being in the details of your day doesn't mean that God also isn't in the details of your day. The point that everybody should come in to agreement and into the understanding is that we all have an opportunity to choose. No one makes you be disrespectful. No one can cause you to be a disrespectful kid. No one can cause you to be a lying kid. No one can cause you. These are all decisions you have to make. Does that make sense? So when it comes to, okay, the parent has the role of training, and but the parent has the role as a human being. I have the role of being a servant of God, and i got to try and figure life out with him, just like you guys have to try and figure out uh, life with him, with us. Does that make sense? But it's like, man. I also have children that I'm responsible for, and I have to make sure that I train them the way God wants me to train them. I have to make sure that once they hit this life filled with pressure, filled with trials and tribulations at every corner, man, Pastor Ant, you make life seem scary. It's scary to those that don't know Jesus. But when you're walking around and you are the light, you're not looking for light in dark places. Does that make sense? Because you are walk into a situation, the only reason you should be scared is if you can't see. But the Bible says his word is a light unto our what? Our path. Which means everywhere we go, we see what's up. The problem is, when it comes to what your parents say to you about that relationship, what your parents say to you about that situation becomes more of a, because I I don't feel like that's what I'm supposed to be doing. I don't feel like you're right. I feel like that things are going to be different with me. Speaking to the mic. Oh, you telling me to? I feel like things are supposed to be different with me. I don't feel like uh, things are going to go the way uh, things went for you, Dad. And that may be the case. But understand that you have now an opportunity. I was talking to my son about this today. Every day you wake up, you have an opportunity, a new opportunity, an opportunity to gain trust, 
an opportunity to build on an already existing relationship. What you say, how you say it, when you say it, who you choose to say it to, all of those things echo in your future. The problem is with life, young people don't take it serious. And I don't want you to be the type of people that wait until something tragic happens before you realize I have the ability right now to make a difference in the relationship I have with my parents, in the relationship I have with God, in the relationship I have with my friends. Because it's not just one relationship. How you are in that relationship sooner or later will trickle down into the other relationships, whether it's a friendship, whether it's boyfriend, girlfriend, whatever it may be. But I need you guys mindful. So with all that I've said, I want to be very transparent. Y'all going to let me be transparent mm -hmm. so I could use y'all stories? Yeah. Yes, sir. You, you sure? Huh. What? 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 Girl, we live. Come on. Can I? <laughs> she ain't having it. Junior? You said, you said, yeah, go ahead. What about you, Junior? Huh? <laughs> he said, but what you been talking about now? I don't know. I don't know. I, don't know. I, I won't embarrass you, but I need, I feel like when we're transparent, that it's, it's not just more relatable, but I believe healing could take place out there. And I want you guys to feel free to come up to the mic if you have a question or if you have something you want to say, just raise your hand and they'll bring you the mic, okay? I'm not a perfect father. I don't think there's such thing as a perfect father, right? Except for God. But I try my best. As a father, what are some things that I can do differently to better our relationship? Yeah, whoever goes first. Um, okay. I feel like something that you can do better is tone. Sometimes, like, it's the way you come. It's sometimes it's the way you present things. Like, I get it. Like, I understand what you're saying, but it's the way you say it. And to me, it's like, because you know, like. It's sarcastic. Yeah. yeah. And my mind, my, my, my go-to is like. That's disrespectful? You feel disrespected? Yeah. I don't feel dis. I'm saying you're trying to hit? <laughs> I'm saying you're trying to hit? I feel like. <laughs> I feel like, yeah, it's just a way you talk because sometimes it's like, I just go blank. Like, I just be like, all so right. So you stop hearing what I'm saying? Yes, because I feel like you just yelling at me and not even giving me a chance to process it. Like, you, I get it. Like, what you're saying, I'm listening and I'm understanding it, but it's the way you're talking to me and it's like, all right, bro. I got you. And you're 18, right? Yeah. So at a certain age, it does become more Man, I'm a man, I require respect, I, you know, talk to me respectfully. But it's frustrating because it's like you can't say, yo, don't talk to me like that, respect me. You can't say that to me, can you? <laughs> no. no. Okay, there it go, I just wanted to see if pride was going to kick in. Well, I could say it, oh, can you? You know, but I, I, I can understand that and, and I'll come back to that. Who else? I think you're great, we're good. But um, I would just like a clarification on this one thing that she said that I just can't let go. What she said It better not have shame. nothing to be about shame. Okay. <laughs> I'm just saying, because you're saying that he's like the empathetic one, but like when it comes to you being pissed at them, I'm the empathetic one. Yeah, because you're like a butt kisser. She don't kiss butt. Exactly. Shane is the one who came up with the whole bonus she don't points. What? She don't. She doesn't. Yeah, I'm just like that. She doesn't that even, guy. she doesn't, and no disrespect, but she doesn't even clean the kitchen properly. Okay, now we're stepping a little bit out of character right <laughs> you now. You don't. Uh, babe, am I wrong? Does Mom, Riley, is, is Riley can, exceptional with cleaning the kitchen? Mom can really just. Or do I have to clean a dish after I take it out of the cupboard? Is, and you're so amazing, mother, she wherever said what? you are. Okay, so we, we understand lying. that. So we're saying, okay, so I'm great, cool. Next. Kind of take it back now. Well, Shane or Junior, anybody? What could I do different? Morpheus. Like, I don't, 
mean, I think you're straight. Like, I don't know. I'm straight. Yeah. That was you don't do like, I, I don't think you don't have to improve on anything. This week, I feel like you were like, like, you surprised me. Yeah, this week has been a really good week for us. Why has it been a really good week? Like, I didn't think you was going to allow us to go to the parade and the game. Why? I mean, usually we don't be able to go nowhere for real, so it's like. Why? <laughs> <laughs> Wait a minute. Whoa, that's not true. Yeah, he really does let us go. I don't go let y'all go want. places? He lets I me mean, go before, places. Like before, like it was like if we like at Creekside, we didn't really go nowhere for real. Or we didn't have a car. Like I'm just saying though, because it's like we never really Well, did well a lot of the places you had to go at the time, I had to take you. And I'd be tired. I ain't trying to do all that. Now on the weekends, you know, mommy would take you places, right? That's me taking you places. Right, mom? I don't let y'all go places. I mean, you let her say go. Yes. That's yeah. what I'm saying. Yeah. I'm like, yeah, like you, you surprised me and stuff. And then you called to check on me and stuff. I was like, yeah, oh, that's I like cool. You've been checking up on me all week, and you really usually don't do so that. So I usually don't do that. Yeah. So this week I'm a good dad. Last week could have been better. No, yeah. I feel like you've like. I think you like. You were thinking about me more, and I oh, appreciate it. I was, it. and I made a conscious. The Holy Spirit shared with me. He said. Uh, well, he shared with me something about this one. This one loves affection. So, like, hey, son, come here. Come on. Aww. No. He loves stuff like that. You know, he needs stuff like that. So, I've been trying to. Should, I shouldn't share that? I mean, you can. I just didn't. I wasn't really the affectionate type kid back in the day. So, now it's like. He no. really he really needs the affection. So, that's why he just loves Lisa. Because she gives, like, the best. Head. Oh, you your boogie dookie dookie. And, and he's like, oh, I'm a baby again. I'm a baby again. Oh, you're 18. Anyway. <laughs> So this week I'm a good dad. I mean, you like you're always a good dad. You just like I feel like you know you improve. You're yeah. improving on the daily. It was a big adjustment cool though. The beginning of the week was a huge adjustment. Why are we just talking about this week? I'm just saying because this week, like I don't know, maybe you and mom started acting like mad, like different because you know <laughs> after the whole talk about the whole get hype thing. Oh, I meant stay hype. Sorry, get that. <laughs> um, but like when y'all was asking us like, oh, how's school? I thought we was in trouble. Like I was like, um, I went. We always ask y'all how's school no, going. No, you don't. Okay, so Are like, you serious? All right. Mom texted me like, oh, how's school going? And we going? keeping it a buck. That was like kind of off guard, but I didn't like, I didn't expect something like we was in trouble or something. I was I didn't trying to figure out anything. what we did. Cause it's Usually not when you, when something nice happens and you try to figure out if you're in trouble, you did something wrong. No, it's because even when I think I didn't do anything wrong, it was always something that I did do wrong that I didn't know I did do wrong. From me or mommy? Both of you. What? You guys tag team us like all the time. I am flabbergasted. I am, whoa. I thought we had a handle on this thing here. Okay, well. You what, too, what? mom. Cause she sent me. She sent me some money. I didn't think she was gonna send me money. She sent you money. Yeah. That's funny. I sent Riley some money. Yeah. <laughs> yeah that's. I was like, oh, she actually. Why are you sent looking something. at me like that? See, and now that's another problem. We're not gonna talk about that today. But when something happens good for him, they upset. When something happens good for him, they upset. When something happens good for her, them up. They upset. It's like, what's the problem? I don't like that. It's like, you know, rejoice with others when good things are happening. Well, are y'all families like you that? You should like that because if you give one of us something, you need to give all of us something. That's, you have a job. That's bull. Anyway. I mean, I'm not as far as money because I, I don't need does, it. Does saying. any of y'all have relationships like that with y'all siblings? <laughs> like, there's times when your brother gets something that you don't get, right? Right. Because as you get older, it's like, okay, well, y'all doing different things. This, what he did, requires a reward. Right? Is, is that true? You sound like the one that gets more than him. You do? Why? Huh? You're more responsible. You should have seen his face when you said that. It's normal. It's like, a, it's a sibling thing. But y'all love each other. Yeah. If somebody was That's popping off normal. on him, he popping off on both of y'all. I don't okay. agree. Okay. So it's, it's y'all just look hurt. like y'all don't like each other, but don't get it twisted. That's my brother. Well, it's not just us. It's really just Riley. You see hurt. that? Y'all spoil her, her and we just see We don't here. spoil Riley. Riley exactly. gets so much. She, like, y'all are. She's a girl. Okay, Thanks. so what? She always talk about, I, I, I keep telling you. She always talk about, oh, you treat them differently. She wants to be treated the same, so I think I, I agree, too. 
When she she just went in your bag, she drunk your juice without saying nothing. If we would have did that, I would have got more What juice? What are you talking about? It's because of the bond. It's because of She went in your bag looking for food. I am more open Burger King bag, you remember? She came in there, sipped your juice. She ain't asked nothing. She just walked in there, looked at your juice, took your phone, started talking to Papa, eating all up on the burgers and stuff. I was like, what are you doing? And he was like, and you let her. I was like. She doesn't so I wouldn't a, let you do nothing like that? No. You punched You've me never in my tried. chest. You yeah, punched me in my chest. I punch you in your chest to make sure your chest is hard. No. <laughs> it's disrespectful when a guy does it. Okay, what about a girl? <laughs> She's my it's because I have it's a one bond daughter. That we have. You guys don't have I have bond. one daughter. And, and you, that's correct. You yes, raised like She said what? No, 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 listen. Riley will come into my room and literally throw up her day. And before, I'm not going to lie, it was a bit much. It was a little aggravating. And in my mind, I would be in other places. I admit that. Airplane mode. Airplane mode. I'm like, <laughs> it's just like, yeah, 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 yeah. And I just say, blah, 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 blah. And I'm like, OK, all right, OK. I, I shouldn't have never gave away the Xbox. Need an Xbox right about now. But anyway, <laughs> as she got older, the conversation is like, I enjoy, I look forward to having the conversations. And the thing about it is, even though I was on airplane mode, the first few halves of it, she didn't let that say, I'm not talking to my dad anymore. She talks to me about everything, about boys, about insecurities, about her feelings, about what she's good at, about what she's horrible at, about things that she likes about herself, things that she hates about herself. She talks to me about that. You guys, Trey, what's up? No. Facts. You good? I just want to be in my room and be alone. <laughs> I just feel like being to myself. Okay, well, how was your day? Good. I asked Riley, how was your day? It was good, let me tell you. So first, and I'm like, you know what I'm saying? She has so it's like, hey, energy. Dad, uh, uh, you got like 50 bucks I could borrow? Yeah, I got you. You ain't got to borrow, it's yours. Yeah, boom, 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 boom. Why? We, we bonding, that's my girl. We like that. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> Y'all little blessed men of gods. Huh? God's children? What's up? Y'all good? Yeah, we good. Okay. Or when you want something, that's when, you know, and they got like this, it's kind of like synchronized swimming. How many of you have ever seen synchronized swimming? How many of you ever wanted a friend to come over to the house, right? And you say to yourself, if I ask, they gonna say no. <laughs> but they like you. So if you ask, <laughs> My, my, my dad likes you more than he likes me. So if you say, if you go and ask, you do. Always, always. I don't. I don't. Well, first, honestly, I didn't see Deshaun's text message until the next day. I was asleep. So you just got no time. And if I don't pick up, ask mommy. I told you. I told you. Well, if I'm not available, then the answer is always going to be wait until I'm available. But the, I asked the question. What can I do as a parent? Now I want to ask you guys, what do you guys feel like you can do differently to be more of a reward to mommy and I? Now, I, I feel like I was talking to you this morning just to be, just about being more, just about communicating more, like letting you know like what I'm doing or how my day was because I feel like even though like I feel like that's a big part. Like, y'all yeah. want to know stuff like that. So I feel like. Yeah, I feel like. So you could be like me and Riley. That, well, I don't want, know about yeah. all that. You, that's what you want, because y'all jealous of that. I don't want all that. Yeah, I'm she, just, all she does I just want all the stuff. Like, that's not communication. That's just her boredom. No, no, it's She's not just about her day. Energy, like. No, he was I talking. He was talking. Talk let him finish. Let him finish. I just. Let him finish. I feel like, yeah, if I feel like I should be able to come to my dad and have those types of conversations. So, and I feel like if I do that, if I wanted something, you give it to me too. So I don't really want the. Well, not quite. Well, yeah, because I have a job, so I won't need much, but right. I'm saying, like. If and I, I got to train you, because I'm training you to be someone's husband, someone's father. Yeah. Right? So it's different. Facts. How I train you guys is going to be different than how I train Riley. You dig? Yeah, but I don't really see any training there. You don't see any training uh, I just feel like she just gets what she wants well, and does what she wants. Well, y'all don't see when I'm in her room scolding her and telling her she need to, has it always been peaches and cream? No. Huh? It took some but time it's, 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 it's more it peaches now. and cream than scolding. Riley, just stop getting a, hold your hand out. Whoa. That definitely, whoa. What? Whoa. That was too much? No. 
I'm sorry, we have a question. Go ahead, baby. <laughs> you getting the what? Huh? Oh, shit. Oh, okay, okay. But you got a question? Okay. Just say it. Take your mic. So can a teenager be trained without the pressures of the parents? Say that again. Can the teenagers be trained without the pressures of the parents? Without the pressure mm -hmm. of the parents? Think of, think of a diamond. How are diamonds made? Pressure. Mining? What? <laughs> no, not how they're found. Oh. <laughs> how are diamonds made? In pressure. The huh? In the rough. What? You see, right. I, I got this thing with my kids. I tell them, because they got this, this whole thing on, and I, th I don't think it's just my kids. I think it's everybody. How, how do you guys view uh, besties or best friends and all that stuff? How do you guys do that? Twin, yeah, okay, yeah, twin. How quick are you to put somebody in that holies of holies, you know everything about me, role? How long? Five, at least. At most. So, could be three, could be two. Okay, got you. What about fellas, since y'all chose to sit over here and the girls chose to sit over there? Huh? That's a long time. That means you grow up without friends. <laughs> but, got you. Got you. Got you. And I'm sure you've been to fighting with one of them, right? Jalen? Yes. I'm, I'm, sure, I'm sure you've gotten into a physical altercation at least once or twice with, with some of your besties. And, and after you're done, See what I'm saying? See what I'm saying? Best of friends. You got to know what you're working with. The, uh, that may have been a bad example. But it's like the pressure. The, your lasting power during hard times. Okay? If you can't take a, no, you can't go to this dance tonight because... I gave you something to do and you didn't do it or you breezed through it. If you can't take that, then when you're older and that man comes to try and break your heart, the, the fall is going to be a lot harder than it would be had you been properly what? Trained. Trained. And that's the detail part of life that I keep trying to get you guys to wake up to. Because a lot of young people see life as if it's a video game. As if you could just respawn or you got, you know, oh, I got like five lives. I'm, I'll just respawn. I'll just come back in and I'll start over. Oh, well, as a believer, you know, when you repent, it's essentially doing that. But man is a spirit. You possess a soul. And you live in a body. Well, you're just talking about one third of this dimension. You're just talking about what you see, hear, feel, touch, smell. But man is a spirit. And the enemy is hiding in the details of your physical day to interrupt your emotional day and straight throw blows at your spiritual day. Does that make sense? I pray I said that slow enough so that you guys did. Raise your hand if you comprehended that. You see what I'm saying? He's going to attack the relationship here, right? Because one day there's going to be a time where she really needs me. And if things aren't good here, It'll be the loneliest time of her life because the time she needed her dad, it was so much animosity and resentment there, she never had an opportunity to really call me. Now, that's not our story, but that's how the enemy works. Honor thy mother and thy father, and all will be well with you. All will be well with you. Highlight some things in your life that's not well with you. And I guarantee you, you'll be able to sit back and assess the situation and say, I got to fix some things with my parents, with my guardians, with my, I got to fix some things. Something, everything ain't right. Go ahead, Lisa. Can you hear me? Can yeah. Can hear me? Okay, I had a question. Um, what do you do if you are a student or kid and, you know, when you say honor your mother, it's really um, maybe easier when they're uh, in authority and they're telling you what's the right thing to do. 
what do you do when you have maybe parents or teachers or those people that may not do what is appropriate or correct to do, but they're adults? How do you respond as a child or teenager? Um, because we're raised to respect those that are in authority and we're always looking at them like, well, but you didn't do it. So they're always really looking at the parents to be the ones to make the right decisions. Mm -hmm. But what do you do as a kid when you see a lot of wrong decisions in your household, maybe when you're out at the mall or even in class with your teacher, what do you do as a student? Got you. And that's a good question. Um, I was taught, and this is what ended up working for me. When you find it hard to respect or honor the person, you honor and respect the seat they sit in. Does that make sense? When you find it hard to honor the person, right? Now let's look at the whole makeup of a person, tripart being spirit, soul, body. Difference between you and that person is the age and how much longer they've been here more than you have, right? But they're in need of the same savior you're in need of. And the same enemy that you have is the same enemy that's been going against your bloodline, not just you, but your whole, what's it called? Uh, not just the bloodline, what is it, genealogy, what is it? Huh? Yeah, your generation. Uh, generational curses and different, I was looking for a different word, but that'll work. Um, your bloodline, he's been, he's your, your great, 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 great grandfather, right? He's been on that. He's been on, the, the, the enemy's been on your bloodline. He's been on the seed of your forefathers for years. And it takes somebody like you at your age saying, no, I was that guy for my family. My father, my biological father, Anthony Carolina, he was a, a dope dealer. And he was a bodyguard for a, a, a highly reputable kingpin in New York in the 80s. So he did a lot of stupid stuff. His father was an alcoholic, drove, uh, from what I understand, he drove, uh, lim he had his own limousine company. So as much as that entrepreneurial spirit was there, there was always the attack of alcoholism. There was always the attack of uh, not graduating high school. There was always the attack of um, uh, getting involved in the criminal activities, right? But it's like understanding that your parents are susceptible to the same things that you're susceptible to, right? It puts you in a place where it's like, okay, this is a spiritual thing. It's hard for me to honor what you're doing. It's, uh, it's hard for me to honor what you're saying. It's hard for me to honor how you are, but you are my mother and you brought me into this world, but you are my father and you brought me into this world. And I won't change, I won't allow what you do to change what I know. Right now, all of you have come into the knowledge of honor and what it really means to honor your parents. So now you're held accountable. The question was, how do you honor someone that seems to be unhonorable? And I'm saying to you, you honor the seat that they sit in as your mother or as your father or as your guardian. But you don't understand, they're alcoholics, but you're still here. But you don't understand, they, they do drugs, but you're still here. But you don't understand, they've allowed people in my family to touch me and, and treat me the wrong way and touch me inappropriately, but you're still here. The point that I'm trying to make is, sometimes you gotta be able to be strong enough to go to God and say, Lord, I trust you with my parents. I'm gonna be the difference. Just like sometimes when Shane comes into the room, he doesn't even know he's being used by God. He's just coming in there trying to honor his father and try to say what's up. But in that honor, there's working that's happening with me. And it's like, okay, okay, that was good. I wanted, he didn't even want nothing. He just came in to love on me and just came in to tell me that I'm doing a great job and I could be going through all types of stuff because as a pastor, I counsel hundreds of young people and their parents. And a lot of times, I don't just get in the car, go home, 
and forget about all that stuff. A lot of times, that stuff is rolling over my head, and then I'm questioning, well, could I do something different as a parent? And then I come home, and I throw that stuff up on my wife, and I'm like, wait, yeah, so I was doing this, and I was doing that, I was thinking this, and I was thinking that. I'm in need of a Savior, Lord. I need to find one of them corners that I had y'all find, right? And I'm praying, and I'm praising God, and I'm like, renew my mind, Lord. Let me renew my mind into something else because... If I focus so much on the negative things, just like you, if you focus just so much on the bad things that your parents are doing, nothing will ever change. All of a sudden, what comes out of your mouth will be what you see. And God has called you to call those things to be not as though they were. We also know that life and what? Life and what? Is in the power of? So when there's beef there with your mom and she's unlovely and she's not lovable or with your dad and he's unlovely and he's not lovable and he's doing all of these horrible things and he's doing all of these things that don't agree with you or that you don't agree with, the devil is in the details to get you to say out of your life giver, right, the wrong thing to bring furthermore death to that situation that has been attacked from generations to generation, to generation, to generation. What do I mean? If you can't honor the person, honor the seat that they sit in. You can't control what someone else does, but what, Shay? What you do. Huh? You control yourself. You can control yourself. Is it easy? No. Is it necessary? Absolutely. Am I trying to get young people to do it? Absolutely. Why? Because I don't call you guys the future. I've never referred to anybody a part of WCYE as the future, except for when I'm in, uh, you know, executive meetings and different things like that, because I'm trying to set up things today for the future of you guys, because you guys are essentially the future of World Changes Church International, right? But as far as the now generation, you're not the future generation, you're the now generation. Own the authority, dominion, and power that God has given you now that you possess today. You're not waiting on it. The only thing that's being waited on is your ability to acknowledge what's already in you. Philemon 1 and 6 says that your faith becomes effectual when you acknowledge the good that is in you. Acknowledge Christ is in you. Acknowledge him. When do I do that, Pastor Ant? Throughout the details of your day. Every day, all day. This conversation that I'm having with this person, is it benefiting God? Is it, is it benefiting the kingdom? This conversation that I'm having with this young lady, is it, is, it, is it gonna echo in my future? Am I telling this young lady the truth or am I painting a picture that I want her to see about me that really ain't the truth, but if she'll take it, it'll do. So you find out, you find yourselves losing yourselves, trying to be someone God never created you to be and it's all because me and mommy got issues. Me and daddy got issues. So because he don't listen to me, or because the only time I get attention is when I do something wrong, I'm going to go out and do something wrong so at least I can have a conversation with my father. I'm going to go out and say something stupid so at least my mom can acknowledge that I exist. All you do is go down to their level when they're unlovely and you continue to be unlovely as well with them. Does that make sense? Lisa, did I answer that question right? Does, did, is, do we have any questions online? It's, it's not your responsibility on what they do. It's your responsibility on what you do. Does that make sense? Raise your hand if you understand that. Raise your hand if you think it's going to be easy. It's not. Um, it's not going to be easy. But neither is drinking nasty medicine. But what do you do when you know you need the medicine? And you gotta, and it's time to drink it up. What do you do? Hold your nose. You just, you gotta. You, it has to be done. Go ahead.
That's, that's good. And it's, it's true. I remember my mom, every time she would, she, back when we first moved here, this was at least uh, 25, 26 years ago, my mom used to smoke cigarettes, and I would hate it. And I think it was because I was in fear because we had moved from New York and we had moved here and it was just me and her. And all on TV, Nancy Reagan, uh, who else would be on? Uh, Ronald Reagan, these were the presidents and his wife at the time. They would always get on TV talking about uh, this is your brain, this is your brain on drugs, or this is what tobacco does to the body and different things like that. And I would see that and I would get in fear because it's like, mom, you smoke cigarettes. So I would tell her, I remember taking her cigarettes and hiding them from her. She would get pissed because ain't nothing like somebody addicted to nicotine who ain't got they, they, you talk about demons, you talk about tone, but you don't know tone till you see somebody <laughs> who, where my cigarettes at? That's the first one. And then, I don't know. Well, I know I had them right here. Where my cigarettes at? Okay. The third time they say it, it's going to be an expletive with it, a curse word. And then before you know it, they're drooling at the mouth, yelling to the top of their lungs, going to lose their doggone voice because they nicking for nicotine. You understand? How do you honor somebody in that situation? You just be who God called you to be in that moment because fire ain't going to put out fire. Water puts out fire. And when mama 38 hot, you got to do what you got to do. And be like, Lord, show me. Lord, lead, spirit, lead me where my trust is without borders. Doggone, I need to walk on this water because mama 38 hot up in this thing. You understand me? You have to choose. Quit waiting to feel like you got to grow up to be able to do the right thing. The right thing is always going to be the right thing whether you choose to do it or not. But whether you benefit from it is totally based on whether you choose to do it or not. So the difference between somebody watching somebody successful and somebody being somebody that's successful is the execution. Does that make sense? Hey, amen? You guys aren't the amen bunch, are you? Okay, it's all good. I got something for you, though. I want to give you a scenario. Before I do that, I want to read this scripture because I think it, it hits different. It, it's, it's one thing when I say it. It's another thing when I can show it to you in the Bible. When I say Hebrews 11 and what? 10 and 11. Hebrews 11. No, that wasn't it. Let me see. This is Hebrews 12 and 11, the Amplified Version. It says, for the time being, no discipline, for the time being, no discipline brings joy, but seems sad and painful. Yet to those who have been trained by it, afterwards, it yields the peaceful fruit of righteousness, right standing with God, and a lifestyle and attitude that seeks conformity to God's will and purpose. I'm going to read that again. That's Hebrews 12 and 11. That's the Amplified Version. Matter of fact, I'm going to read the New Living Translation. Let me see. Here it is. It says, no discipline is enjoyable while it is happening. It's painful. But afterward, there will be a peaceful harvest of right living for those who are trained in this way. I don't care that the Bible said that. It ain't past the ant. I ain't making this stuff up. When I'm speaking, I'm speaking from a place of wisdom that comes from the word. This is my light unto my path. So when I don't know, there's no manual on how to raise a child, but I do have a relationship with God. So when I'm walking in a dark area, he's in me. So I become the light and his word is a light into my path. So I'm not walking blindfolded like, like this. Can you imagine as a parent, you're trying to, feel your way through, but I've seen this before, so I know that if I take the wrong step, I could what? So that's in my what? In my mind, right? But my eyes are closed. I can't see. Hold this. I can't see because pride. I can't see because uh, hurt. I can't see because fear. 
As a parent, our labor to rest is a lot of fear when it comes to our children. I, sometimes I'm battling getting into fear that Shane will make some of the same mistakes that I made or Trail will make some of the same mistakes that I made or Junior will make some of the same mistakes that I made and he won't be able to recover or fear that Riley would run into the 17 year old me. That's a fear. That's a fear, but it, it's blinding. But I've seen the way, but when I allow those things to come in, it's like, I'm trying to raise them right, trying to train them right, trying to train them right. Dad, I hate you, get on my nerves. Or they friends come and say, your, son, your daughter down there like you like that. You know, and you walk in and then you start hearing, right, you hear that? When you hear that, you start thinking, uh-oh, I need to just stay right here. So what happens is you stay stagnant and you stay stuck. Why? Because you're trying to walk this parenting thing out blindly when you have a whole relationship with the father and his word that I just read is a light unto my past. So once I start focusing on that, now my eyes are open. Ooh, I was about to take one more step that way. I'm good. Now I'm on solid ground. Likewise, you guys have to learn how to quit being a child to your parents blindly with the fear of what they may say, the fear of what they may do, and different things like that. We got questions? Steve Scott says, how do I communicate with my dad better when it seems like he doesn't want to talk? Do what Riley did. Just start talking. <laughs> I put it on airplane mode for the first maybe year or so. <laughs> Sheesh. But after a while, I started listening, and the conversation became, oh, man, she's growing up. I didn't know that about you, babe. We're, we're learning each other. And then I share something with her. And, oh, Dad, I didn't know that about you. So now what, what are we doing with our relationship? We're building. We're building. Building. Some of you guys have it may be, it requires building. Every conversation that you have leads to the next phase. And sometimes when you get to a phase that don't feel so good, it's sometimes you need to step back and look at it. it were there more questions? Okay. So I've got a scenario that I want to give you. And I'm going to need some volunteers. Let's see. She looked down. I'm not going to choose her. Uh, Come here. Mm -hmm. Who else? No, it's just going to be me. Me and you. You ready? You ready? I'm going to give you a scenario, all right? Here's a scenario. Your parent has been speaking to you about completing your chores properly. Speaking to, uh, uh, they've been talking to you about speaking to them disrespectfully, staying on top of your schoolwork for months. Your birthday is coming up and you're looking to have a party. You either want a pool party or dinner party. Either way, you feel your friends shouldn't have to pay for anything except the gifts they buy you. The question is, how should your parent handle this? If the child if the child should be able to celebrate the birthday, explain why. So what we're going to do is we're going to act this out. All right? Hold this. You've been totally disrespectful. You told me to shut up. You, you told me to shut up. Uh, in one of your venting moments, you told me I'm a horrible father. Uh, and you wish you were in another family. Right? This is last month. This month is your birthday. Right? And I'm the breadwinner. I've got the bread and the bacon, right? So you want a party, right? And you want it to be all expenses paid. They just show up and they get to have a good time, all expenses paid, right? But you 
you know what you've been saying to me. You know how disrespectful you've been, but you still have that expectation. You ready? All right, I'm the dad. You just disrespect me, told me I was nothing. Told me I'm just like my father, who you hate too. All that, right? You ready? You ready, ready? And go. Uh, I was wondering if I can have a party for my friends. I don't want them to pay for nothing. I just want you to pay for everything and they just show up. You talking to me? Yeah. Oh, hey, hey, hey Kelly. Yeah, hey. How you doing? Good. I love you. About the party. <laughs> <laughs> okay. You know, babe, okay, you know what? Tell me about this party you wanna have. Um, I'm on a dinner party. I want like 12 people there. I want you to pay for like, if they, whatever they get, they can get whatever they want on the menu, you just pay for the ticket after. And my question now, why would I be concerned with that? Cause you're the dad. Because I'm the dad? Yeah. Oh, okay. But you just told me you hated me. My father's worthless, I'm worthless. You wish you were in another family. That was literally a week ago. A week ago is a different day. Okay, pause, 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 pause. Because I started thinking it was for real. All right, give me. Cha! Sheesh! Okay, so let's do the opposite now. You're going to do the opposite? Is that what you would say? To my dad? Yeah. You speak your mind. I, and I believe that of you because you're very liberal. And I told you it's a gift that you have. You'll probably end up being somebody's lawyer defending them off of a case that the world think they were guilty of and you get them off. Mm -hmm. You've got that type of argumentative skill. Yeah. Very <laughs> extremely argumentative, but makes sense when you argue. Mm -hmm. But you would say that? Yeah. You would. Yeah. And you would feel comfortable saying that? To my dad? Yeah. yeah. Why? Speaking to the mic. Um, cause my dad is just like, mm, I'm not a relationship with my dad. Okay. But it's just, I don't know, he's just weird and he's just annoying and it's just, no. So the things that I shared today, as far as honoring them in spite of how they are, how does that resonate with you? I mean, I do try to, like, honor my dad and stuff. I do try to give him, like, a little benefit of the doubt. But it's, like, every time I you try to... You say what? You try to what? I try to give him the benefit of the doubt. Benefit every of the, okay. time I try to, like, reach out to him or, like, have a relationship with him, he always thinks it's, like, about money. So it's, like, I don't even, like, want to be, like, around there because, you know, I don't have time for Have you ever said that it's not about money? Yeah, I have multiple times. It's, like... I'm not about to keep on reaching out to a grown man, like, you're grown. He says that all the time. He be like, well, y'all don't call me, and it's like a phone works both ways. I'm not about to keep doing this, you're grown. No. So, with the message that you heard today, would you do something different? Because your role as a child is to be a reward. Mm -hmm. And the training part, man, that's another message. How do you honor a parent who refuses to train you. Hmm. That's, a, that's another message. You wanna talk about it? No? You do? No? Yes or no? You wanna, yes, you wanna talk about it? <laughs> Looking like your bubble. So, you wanna talk about it? All right, so what questions do you have? I got you. So let me make sure I understand and make sure that they understand as well. So your mom and dad weren't married. They were married. They were married. But when you guys were young, when did it, when did they split? Got you. Okay, so the main parent has been mom? Yeah. Okay. Okay. So you and mom have a obviously a greater relationship. It's not great, but it's okay, but. Yeah, but <laughs> I think some of that has something to do with you too. What? The, the great the great and okay factor. No. Yeah. I mean, because me and my mom, we bump heads a lot. I guarantee you, your sister gonna say something different. <laughs> Vicky? 
She gonna say the same thing. Her and my mom are worse than you. You gonna say the same thing? Thank you. Yes, she is. No, <laughs> she not. Yes, she is. She's lying. Just cause what? She's lying. <laughs> All right, so your question is, how do you honor someone, how do you honor a parent that doesn't train you, right? Yeah. Because they're not there to be trained. They're not there, they're not doing any training. Right. You got a question too? No, if you would say just the same, what would your parents say? Well, what would you say? Okay. <laughs> me and my mom relationship from Kayla is different. So I would say, yes, me and my mom bump heads all the time because I have an issue with not being quiet when I'm trying to explain my reasoning. Oh, you talk when she's talking. Yeah, it's like, <laughs> no, not when, she's, not when she's talking. Like, she'll say something, and I'm like, no, that's not, like, I have to have the final say because what I'm saying is correct. I'm working on it. But with me and my mom, like, I can talk to my mom. Kayla will, like, she will talk to her. If my mom's not understanding, then the conversation's over. Kayla can deal with it. So I think that's the difference. I'm going to answer it with a statement on what I did, okay? So I remember I first found out Junior was on his way, right? At that time, I was in the thick of it, of my um, life as a youngster, okay? Uh, I was how old when Junior came? I wasn't no teenager. It's like twenty. I, I had to be like twenty. Twenty, like twenty. Twenty, twenty-one. And when I found out, I found out about a month before he actually came, right? So I literally had a month to totally transform from, you know. I gotta give you guys details so that you, well not details, but I gotta paint this picture so that you understand just how drastic the change had to be. I went from going, sneaking in people's houses, tying folks up, robbing them, taking all their stuff, robbing dope boys, selling drugs, doing all that stuff, to you got a baby on the way in less than a month. So I had to go from one extreme to now every decision that I made had to consider whether it was going to affect what I am able to do for him or not. I didn't know whether he was going to be a boy or a girl at the time. I just knew a kid was coming. Now, here's where this has something to do. What does that have to do with my dad? At 12 years old, Dr. Dollar came into my life and began to expose me to what a father really was. Got that? So when I hear you have a child on the way, I had a reference to go to. I'm not sure that your father had the proper reference. You understand? Now, me and his mom at the time, we weren't seeing eye to eye in a lot of areas. And when you take the not seeing eye to eye and you put it with our age at the time and the level of immaturity that we dealt with, it was toxic. <laughs> Cause we were kids trying to make something happen. The point that I'm trying to make is have patience with your father. We don't always know what to do. And as much as a man, the, the demons that we battle trying to be right and try to be the leader and try to be the, and just to get into arguments here, get into arguments there, we internalize that stuff and we beat ourselves up, which is why suicide is huge in the African-American male community as well as female. But it's huge because no one checks on the lion. No one checks on the one who's supposed to be the strong one. Does that make sense? I'm not making any excuse for you. I'm just trying to open up your mind to maybe it's more than meets the eye. As an adult, when I see my mom going through things, I always want to know, okay, well, did something happen in her childhood? Or, or when I see my dad going through things, I want to I know, I want to talk to people who knew them when they were my age or when they were, you, you know what I'm saying? You want to get to the root of it. And in that, maybe a good question to ask him, 
or maybe you know or maybe you don't know or how his relationship was with his father, how his relationship was with his mother. And in that, you may find not a validation but a reason to why it may be that way. But now it opens you up to build based off of the right information. You dig what I'm saying? I'm just saying have patience and be empathetic. Sometimes all we see is what happens to us because we put ourselves in the center. And when you put yourself at the center, what do you set yourself up to do, guys? Take all the hits. When you put yourself in the center, everything, even the good things, hurt you. Because you're at the center. And it's a trick of the enemy because he's trying to destroy the institution of the child and the, the, the parents. Divorce and single, uh, single, uh, single parent homes and how many young men are growing up without their fathers and different things like that. It's an epidemic bigger than COVID. And it's been an epidemic and a pandemic bigger than COVID. Most of the, the murders and stuff that you see out here on Old National and then South Fulton and all in Georgia period is as a direct result of young men growing up without their fathers. Think about this. We, we, times are changing, Caleb. I met a month ago a 42-year-old great-grandmother. Think about that. Not grandmother. What did I say? Great-grandmother. 42, still looking like she in her 20s. Great grandmother. Right? Mothers are turning mothers at 15, 16 years old. Grandmothers at 28, 29 years old. Great grandmothers at 42, 40. It's changing. Be patient because you don't know what happened prior to you. I was able to make the right decisions because I was exposed to it. God intervened in, my, uh, in, the, in the details of my day. As a young kid, as a young kid, he intervened in the details of my day by sending Dr. Dollar to me at 12 years old to be able to expose me to other states and other countries and what it means to be a man and what it means to be a father. Everybody doesn't have that, which is one of the reasons why I do what I do which is one of the reasons why I stay on their tail. Why, which is one of the reasons why I stay on their tail. Why? I'm raising husbands. I'm raising fathers. I'm raising mentors. I'm, you get that? You don't know what your father was or wasn't exposed to. That's the conversation you need to have. There's a reason behind it. Doesn't justify it. However, if you're committing to building that relationship, Leaders ask the right questions. Ask the right questions. So I want to encourage you and challenge you. Dig a little deeper. It's bigger than, it's not always about you and what you did. And sometimes the enemy makes you think, oh, he don't want a relationship with you because you messy or because you did so because it ain't you. Every father wants a perfect, great relationship, especially with their daughters. With the sons, it's going to be there because we got everything in common. Physically, mentally, emo you understand what I'm saying? But with the girls, it's different. The, the relationship between the, the, the father and the daughter is always supposed to be, they, they always supposed to be closer than the boys. That's just how they go. And the boys are usually closer with the mother, mama's boy. Especially Shane. Shane, oh my goodness. You know, but that's how it goes. But with that, what you're talking about, dig a little deeper. All right? You got anything? You good? Y'all going to do it? Yeah. Take them out to eat. Y'all working again. <laughs> Y'all got your jobs back. <laughs> Y'all got money? I'm in so, so what that mean? You ain't got no money? Take him out. Let's go to pick a, like, let's go to pick a dilly. Everybody stand up to your feet. I pray that you guys understood what we're trying to, I pray that you understand what we're trying to do. The enemy's after your relationships with your parents. And the enemy hides in the details of your day. Refuse to lose in that area so that all can be well with you. Babe, you got something? Come on up. I got you. Boom.
should I talk to you from back there? What's up? Um, so, yeah, next week, I think that we should go ahead and start talking about loving the unlovely. So That's fourth Sunday. Oh, next service. I th- okay. The, fir- the next time we come together to speak after field day Sunday. Y'all ready for that part? Yeah, because how we break it down is you got to understand your purpose, because if you don't understand the purpose of a thing, you'll abuse it. So we showed you the purpose. We showed you the definition of honor. Your purpose as a child is to be a reward to your parents. Their purpose in your life is to be a trainer. And uh, we got the qualities of what a trainer looks like, and we'll we'll share that with you as well. But we also want to talk about that, how to love the unlovely. And we also want to talk to you guys about how to honor your parents when it comes to who you decide to date. So we're going to be talking about relationships, boyfriend and girlfriend, that first kiss, that first uh, unchurch hug. You heard what I said? That unchurch. Show them a church hug, babe. Show them, show them how the dude be trying to hug. They be doing all that. Y'all need to calm y'all little behinds down. All right. But we're going to talk about all that, but is there anybody in here who hasn't accepted Christ as their Lord and personal Savior? We good? All right, I'm going to pray for you guys. Father God, I pray a hedge of protection over each and every young queen, young king in this building. I declare them whole, nothing missing, nothing broken. Lord God, I declare that the word that came forth today resonates in their minds, and as they go out into life, as they go out into pressure, that they don't view it as pressure, but they view it as an opportunity to grow. I declare it so in their individual lives. In Jesus' name, I pray. Amen. Go get you something to eat. We got pizza over there, some Kool-Aid. Hey, put me up one, Tyler, for some Kool-Aid. Say hi to Ray some pizza. Ray. Where Ray and Tay at? Hey, Ray and Tay, love you, baby. Yeah, I'm back in the building. Did you get something from this amazing service today? Did you learn anything from this sermon? Well, I hope you did, and I'm glad you did. But with all that to the side, I will see you guys next week. Peace. WCY, WCY, WCY. WCY, right. world changers, yeah. world changers, yeah. youth experience, youth experience. Now see, we changing the world, man, we changing your views. It's our time.